Good morning and welcome. Welcome to A Sanctuary in the World. I am the Reverend Toya Richards and uh, I am in this space out in the world, this virtual space, um, th where we come together each week to think about uh, what we believe, our faith, and what guides us and how it intersects with the world. I come to you each week from a different location, a different uh, place um, where we can use that as the backdrop to examine the kinds of things that um, that guide us and the kinds of things that um, that we believe and uh, look at that in 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 the larger scope of of this world of of the world in which we navigate today. Um, I am at Stone Arch Bridge in um, downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, it is very cold here. Uh, it never really gets warm in, in Minnesota, just a short period of time, but um, it has, it has, winter has returned. So it's cold here and rainy, but nevertheless, I am here at Stone Arch Bridge. Stone Arch Bridge was built in 1883 and is a former railroad bridge. Um, it crosses the Mississippi River at St. Anthony Falls in downtown Minneapolis. And I'm gonna turn my camera so you can kind of see um, the, the river and uh, kind of sort of the falls. And so this bridge, uh, Stone Arch Bridge, is the only arched bridge made of stone that crosses over the Mississippi River. It's the only only uh, bridge, arched bridge, made of stone on the entire Mississippi River. So it's very significant um, in in its life and what it uh, and what it does. Um, today, it serves as the backdrop um, as we. As a, as a people, as community, literally begin to move out from our quarantine spaces um, officially and resume life, um, a life in this sort of chaotic uh, world we live in, this unjust world that we live in um, that's full of all kinds of uh, challenges in front of us. Or as we perhaps figuratively move out, step out from the things that have kept us locked down or restricted in, in our life journeys on, on this thing, uh, on this path that we're all on. Um, you individually know what those things are, what those challenges are, what circumstances, what emotions um, have challenged you along your path. And so we are um, moving out, hopefully, prayerfully, from uh, the, the literal uh, quarantine spaces, restricted spaces, and, and from those figurative spaces in our lives with, that have kept us locked up. We are trying to venture out, venture hope, uh, venture forth, hopefully, um, as those who have been and are still transforming, who are still changing and, and evolving as people. And as we do that, as we do that, it is necessary, I think, that we acknowledge the need for bridges, the need um, for things that, that help connect us to what um, is the next right thing in, in our lives. Um, who or what acts as a bridge in your life? A bridge perhaps over troubled waters, a bridge that, um, that uh, to the place, a bridge that connects you to the place that God has designed just for you. I'm mindful of that question today, specifically Mother's Day. Um, as I've navigated this week, um, thinking a little bit about the people um, who are close to me, my family, my friends, um, those people who have br brought love and continue to bring love and light into my life and who continue to act, who have acted as bridges for me. Um, and, and then there are those who also have gone on, those who uh, are former bridges who have gone on to take their place among the great cloud of witnesses. Um, many of those have been bridges for me and I know that um, you have those same kinds of bridges in your own life. You know, when I thought about that in the context of my faith, this notion of bridges and connectors and in the context of my faith, I couldn't help but think about Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who always, always seemed to have, um, to be that presence. She was always that person that was there, that bridge, if you will, 
um, to help him as he moved along the path that was set for him, as he journeyed along the course that was designed for him. We know at various times in in uh, in the historical te in the in the biblical text, Mary was there. She was there, um, being that force, being that bridge. Um, at his death, she was there. We know John uh, 19. I'm going to read it for you. Actually, John 19, verse 25, um, tells us that Mary was there. Mary was there at the very end of his death. John 19, verse 25. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. She was there at his death. She was there at the empty tomb. And she was there also after Jesus had ascended and his disciples were trying to figure out what was next, which way to go. They needed a bridge. They needed people to help guide. And she was there then too. Acts 1, Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. I'm going to read that to you as well. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath's day journey way. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Mary was there. Mary was there from the very beginning. She had a role to play. She had a role to play in the life and the journey of Jesus, who was fully, fully human. And, and I can't help but think about I can't help but think about how her presence was modeled for him how she modeled what it means to be a bridge for him and uh, because he was fully human just like us he needed models he needed people who would help guide him he knew what he was there to do and so she I believe um, did that for him and she did it for him so that ultimately he could do it and do it to perfection. Um, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how is your faith, how is our faith calling us to be a bridge? A bridge in ways and for whom, for people who need it out in this world. How are you acting as an intercessor? A steady and stable structure for those around you in need on their own life journeys. I encourage you to meditate on that this week, to reflect on bridges and bridges past and bridges, pre bridges present in your own life and how your faith supports and affirms you to be that same kind of stable force in the lives of others. That is what I hope for you this week. That is what I encourage you and invite you to do this week. That's what I'll be doing for myself as well. And so in with all that in, in mind, let it be so. I wanna leave you with a letter, a letter that I received in um, actually 1986. It was a letter that I received when I was a sophomore in college and it was from my mother. Um, it was a time period where I was on a journey. I was trying to figure out um, how to get from point A to point B and I needed a bridge. I needed a space. I needed a person to be that stable force and she along with many others was that bridge for me. So listen if you would to her words. I'll point out also that she references her bridge, my grandmother in this letter. Dated February 23rd, 1986, Sunday night. Dear Toya, I hope you liked the lasagna and the chicken a la can and the $10. I am reading today's newspaper and thought you'd like these clippings, which are still here. 
Also, last Sunday was Mother's birthday. We all took food and had dinner out there. I gave her $5 specifically to be used for admission to see the color purple. I went today, she went today and saw it. Mary Catherine could not go, so she went alone. She said she really enjoyed it. Love, Mother. I've kept it along with all of the other letters during that time period of the people who were bridges in my own life. My friends, I pray that you too will find what you need in your faith system. You will find, um, you will find uh, the strength and the, um, the wisdom in your faith system to be a bridge for those who need it most, uh, especially in your lives and in this world. Well, that's all I have today. Um, and as I've s spoken, it has cleared up some. Look at that. Um, as always, you can find out more about the social enterprise that I'm engaged in um, at gracemultimedia.org, www.gracemultimedia.org. I invite you to go there and learn more, read more, listen more, um, and, uh, and, and, and give me a shout out. There's a place where you can send me an email or you can email direct me directly at toyarichards at gracemultimedia.org. There also is a space for you to donate um, if you feel so moved to do so. Well, thank you so much again for joining me in A Sanctuary in the World. Have a wonderful week and be blessed.